What are the four red flags you should look out for when buying a turnkey rental property? Let's dive into it. Hey there, I'm Clayton Morris, founder of Morris Invest, and today we're gonna to talk about turnkey rental providers. I know a thing or two about them as we run one ourselves. Now, it's very important when you are seeking out a turnkey rental provider, either you're gonna do the property yourself or you're going to work with a reputable company. Either way, you should know what to look for. Number one red flag, ask the turnkey provider, do they take care of everything from soup to nuts? That is, are you gonna be left holding the bag? I've heard horror stories about people who purchased a property that didn't have that end-to-end -end connection with the company after things were done. That is to say, what happens if the Board of Health drives by and notices some branches in the yard? I've heard of companies where they'll charge you up to $70, $100 just to go out to the property to see what storm damage is there, or if there are branches in the yard, or there's a debris violation. Are you going to want to pay for those nickel and dime things? Or is the company going to take care of all of those things from soup to nuts? Very important questions to ask when you start down that path. Number two red flag is if the company tells you that they don't accept financing if you're working with them. Now, we work with folks who need financing all of the time. It's an important part of the process. Private lenders, traditional lenders, uh, you should be aware of that. And one reason they're probably telling you that they don't work with financing is because the property won't appraise for what they're selling it for. And that's a big red flag. I've heard of horror stories of different turnkey providers selling properties, you know, $70,000, uh, and they're only worth fifty dollars or $55,000. Well, that's of course not gonna be able to get financing. The bank is gonna send their appraiser out to the property and chances are uh, it's gonna be well below and I would certainly walk away from that deal if I were you. So if they don't accept financing, you wanna ask why. Uh, obviously cash moves things much more quickly, but financing is an essential part of the investing process. When you don't have to use your own money, there's more to go around. You're able to buy more properties. That is the brilliance of private financing. That is the brilliance of using the bank's money to build up your portfolio of properties. So that is red flag number two. Red flag number three. The seller is asking you to put down more than 30%. I don't know why they would do that. Uh, it probably is because the property is not going to hit their numbers and they want to get as much money from you up front, 30% down. We don't even deal with that. We just let the bank and the private financing that you're working with do it. So you, normally on an investment property, you're going to have to put about 25% down. That's kind of a standard uh, rule of thumb. So if they ask you to put down a lot more up front, hmm, I would say no thanks. That doesn't sound right to me. I'm going to look around. And my final big red flag is vacancy rate. If you're buying a property and the vacancy rate that the, that the turnkey provider is telling you is way too high, then you need to be aware that that property is going to sit vacant more often than not. It's always going to have a tenant turnover, right? You're always going to have a property that's going to have to flip over a tenant occasionally, whether it's a year or two or three years, depending on the length of your leases. But high vacancy rate is a problem. It could be a number of reasons. High crime, low jobs, low demand for rent, maybe uh, other people overbuilt properties in that area. I think vacancy rate is probably one of the biggest indicators of a city that you should avoid and a turnkey company that you should avoid, especially if they're in certain markets like Memphis or Jackson, Mississippi that have incredibly high vacancy rates. You may want to consider avoiding those areas. Go for places where your vacancy rate is going to hit that 4%, 5%. Those are areas that I love to invest in. That's well below the national vacancy rate average. Well, that's today's video. If you would like to subscribe, I would love for you to be a subscriber to our Morris Invest YouTube channel because we publish videos every week. We're trying to pull the veil back on, on re owning rental real estate and give you tactical, strategical tips that you can go out there and start investing in real estate. We're going to be doing so many great videos and I hope you'll subscribe. Just click on the link there to subscribe and check out the other videos in this playlist right below in the description. We'll see you back here next week, everyone. Here we are at uh, 3289 Schofield. This is one of our rehabs we're in the middle of right now. So the whole outside.